What is up everyone, recently I've been getting a lot of questions about PvP IVs from battlers that are wondering if their 90% Pokemon are good enough for Master League or their whatever rank, Toxapex or whatever, is good enough for Great League. So I figured that today I'd answer all of those questions by showing you the easiest way to figure out if your Pokemon is good enough for Go Battle League. This works with any Pokemon, whatever league whatever IV. For this, I'll be using our good friend PV Poke, particularly the Matrix Sim function, which you'll find in the battle tab, just top right, Matrix Simulation. This allows you to simulate a group of Pokemon versus another group of Pokemon, which will be very useful for what we're doing today. Firstly, you're gonna select the proper league. I'll be doing different examples today in several leagues, but let's just start with Master League. As I have a Dragonite I want to build for Master League Premier Classic, but I am not sure which one to build uh, from my limited selection of Optimal IV Dragonite. So we're just going to select Master League level 40 as we are playing in Classic, and that only allows level 40 uh, Pokemon. So select that, and then we're going to start filling in Pokemon on the left and the right here. Let's just start with the right. This is where you're gonna input all the Pokemon you'll be fighting against. So the meta you'll be playing against. And luckily, PV Poke has this set up for us already. We're playing in the Master League Premier Classic. And PV Poke already has a custom group set up with all of the most common Pokemon you will face in the Master League Premier Classic. Very, very nice. Then on the left here, you're gonna add your Pokemon and the possible IV spreads you have for it. In my case, that's Dragonite. Before we start adding our own IV spreads though, we're gonna start by adding the perfect variant. The best IV spread possible in a Master League that is just a hundo. This functions as like a Pokemon to compare your like suboptimal spreads to, to see if they perform similarly. Then I'm gonna start entering my own IV spreads. These, these I've just made up to be honest, but uh, I got a 10, 15, 14 Dragonite, for example, I could build. I got a, a 15, 11, 10 Dragonite I could build. And then I have another option, a 12, 12, 12 I could make. Just add these, then it's time to simulate. Just press battle and this whole matrix with a bunch of information pops up. What, it ba what this basically showcases is the sim result in the one shield. As when we are started simulator this, we put it in the one to one shield scenario. This is usually where I like to start, but once you delve deeper into it, you could start looking at the two two scenario or the, even the zero zero as well, if this is what you like. But usually I like starting with the one shield scenario. So this is the same result in the one shield scenario. Clearly, all these Dragonite beat Conkeldor quite hard in the one shield with a 827 rate. We're not really gonna look at this to start as what is below her is much more interesting. The differences tab. This is where the magic happens. This will show you exactly what is different between the Hundo Dragonite and the Dragonites you selected from your box to check out. For example, my 10, 15, 14 Dragonite will lose against Dragonite and Hydreigon in the one shield. These are matchups that the Hundo Dragonite would win. Even press on Hydreigon here and it will show the battle ratings of all of them immediately. As you see here, the Hundo Dragonite just barely beats Hydreigon whilst the others lose. This is because this Dragonite has more HP and it's just barely able to get to the second Dragon Claw, as you can see in this simulation. It just barely reaches the second Dragon Claw uh, with one HP remaining to take down Hydreigon and because the others are lack lacking HP, uh, they cannot do that. A more interesting matchup is this Gyarados matchup, actually, That's that the 15, 11, 10 loses. We can go to this one. As you can see, all the Dragonite win. And in order to figure out why this matchup is different, you gotta take a look in the other tabs as well. The Breakpoint tab will show you how much damage a single one of your fast moves do, 
against the opponent. So in this case, Dragonite's Dragon Breath against any of these Pokemon. And again, the difference tab will show you where these lack. The 10 attack Dragonite, for example, misses a breakpoint versus Conkeldor and Sneasler, which causes you to do one less damage with Dragon Breath. Clearly, that wasn't enough to change the matchup, though, as you still win these even with that. So it's not a huge difference. If we go to the bulk point tab, though, you will see that the lower defense Dragonite lack quite a bit. This, this 15, 11, 10 one uh, misses a bulk point versus Florges, Metagross, Riparian, and the Gyarados, which we looked at earlier. So that would be the reason why this Dragonite would lose against Gyarados in the one shield scenario, as it takes one more damage from Dragon Breath from Gyarados. You can use the fourth tap attack to check if you're gonna win or lose CMP against certain Pokemon as it will show you the difference in attack between your Pokemon and the opponent. For example here the Hundo Dragonite versus the Hundo Conkeldur. The Dragonite has 15.8 attack more which means that you'll always win CMP there. Versus opposing Dragonite of course there is no difference so it's plus zero unless you have one with lower attack this 10 attack Dragonite who have minus four attack or for attack less, which means you will always lose the CMP. Again, the difference tab will also show you where the differences are. The 10 attack Dragonite will, for example, lose CMP versus, versus other Dragonites, Garchomp, Gengar, and Sneasler, where the Hundo would win. So far, we've only checked out the one shield scenario, but if you want to be extra thorough, feel free to check out the differences in the two shield scenario or zero shield scenario as well by changing the shields on the left and the right, pressing battle again. However, I don't, I don't recommend you delve too deep into this as the breakpoint, bulk point and attack tab won't change and they are the most important to look at. Ultimately, the battle rating tab are just simulations and they depend on you playing out the matchup exactly as in the simulations. So I wouldn't put too much weight into this compared to these tabs, but it is interesting to look at uh, what we can learn from this is, for example, these rather suboptimal Dragonite will lose against Conkeldur in the Zero Shields, for example, which is interesting to know, but how often are you going to be in that matchup, really, unless you lead your Dragonite? It's not going to happen that often, so I wouldn't put too much weight into it. Ultimately, if I was to choose one Dragonite to build from this set of three Dragonite, I would go for the 10, 15, 14 one. Because I don't lose any important breakpoints. Conkeldor and Sneezer just aren't common enough to worry about. And I lose no bulk points. These other Dragonite take uh, more damage from some pretty big meta threats, such as Metagross, Gyarados, and Florges. Attack-wise, I will lose some CMPs, but since I'm running a one-turn move in Dragon, in Dragon Breath, I don't expect CMPs to come up that often, so I'm not too worried about it. That final analysis is going to be different for every Pokemon, though, and it's highly dependent on what you're going to give up. When you do this kind of analysis, you got to realize whatever Pokemon you have in your box, it's not going to be optimal. It's a give-and-take situation, and you got to decide for yourself what is worth it giving up. Besides that, the analysis was only done on the current Master League Premier Classic meta. If there's ever a new move or Pokemon introduced that just mixes up the meta that might mess stuff up, because your Dragonite that's with 10 attack might not hit breakpoints versus the new meta Pokemon. So it's always a risk to build like a suboptimal Pokemon, and ultimately it's up to you to decide if it's worth taking. Personally, I have quite a lot of dust, so building a 10, 15, 14 Dragonite, which is very useful for me now, would be worth it, but for you, it might not be. In Greater and Ultra League, the process is extremely similar as Master League, except there's the added difficulty of guessing your opponent's IV spread, which is impossible. In Master League, it was easy, of course. We could just prepare for Hundos on the opposing side, but in Greater and Ultra League, every opponent is going to run a different IV spread, which makes an airtight analysis impossible, but we can do our best to, like, guesstimate a little bit. What I like to do is just like in Master League, you just put the Great League meta on the right here, if that's the meta you're simulating for. And then the Pokemon I want to check out today is Toxapex. In Master League, would put a Hundo on the first spot, as that is guaranteed the best IV spread you can get to compare to. 
In Great League, there's no such thing as a best IV spread, but generally the rank one is gonna be one of the best. So that's the one I like to put in the first spot. So just maximize that, that's the rank one. And then I like to press the add and compare button because then I can also compare to the highest defense Toxa packs and the highest attack Toxa packs, which could show you some interesting bulk and break points you might want to shoot for. It also puts the rank one there again, which I'm just going to delete right now. And then you're going to start adding your own IV spreads. Uh, for example, I got a 10, 15, 15. Uh, I want to, I might want to run. Just going to put that there. And, and then I got a, uh, let's see, yeah, 4, 11, 14. Why not? Got that too. Maybe that will be good enough. Let's check it out. Just press battle. And here you go. We got the matrix. Just like before, scroll down, you can again check out the differences. One thing that's important to note is that these simulations are being ran against the default PV poke IV spreads. I am not sure what rank these all are, but they're pretty average to good ranked uh, pokeable. But of course, you're not, not, not all your opponents are going to have the default PV poke spread. I would assume that basically none of your opponents have the default PV poke IV spread. So this is not an airtight analysis at all, but it does give you a good guesstimate. What I usually like to do to get a better guesstimate is sim against both the default IVs and the maximum stat product IVs, which you can change in this window here. Just like in Master League, just flip through these tabs, check out the differences to see if your Toxic Packs perform similarly to the rank one or like the high defense or attack one. In Greater and Ultra League, I like to put a lot more weight into the battle rating tab compared to the other three, because sometimes you try to chase breakpoints, for example, but because you lose a lot of health chasing those, you end up actually still losing the matchup. For example, this Toxapex here can hit a, a breakpoint versus Nidoqueen. So you actually do one more damage compared to the rank one, but you actually end up doing much worse in a matchup as, uh, well, you just died to the earth power, whereas the rank one can actually survive and get to an extra bright. So what I usually like to do in Great and Ultra League is just scroll to the right here, check out the win-loss record. For the rank one, it's 25-15, and this 10-15-15 is not far behind with 24-16. And that is usually enough to just give the thumbs up. That one is good enough. But if you want to be more thorough, check out the differences here. Apparently, the 10-15-15 loses to Drapion, where the rank one wins. And it doesn't seem to be dependent on breakpoint, bulk point. That means that it is dependent on, like, your HP not being enough which is kind of dependent on how you play the matchup out. Like, all right, you're going to lose against Trapion if you stay into it, but how often are you going to be in that matchup and play it out 100% of the way? I would assume not that much. So this is really not that big of an L. I do really like taking a look at the break and bulk point tab just to see if I can optimize my Toxapex or any other Pokemon a little more. If you take a look at the highest attack one, you're gonna see against what Pokemon it is possible to reach a break point. So do more damage with your poison jab. And if you really wanted to, you could check all of these matchups out individually to see how much attack you're gonna need to reach that bulk point. And then also check how much HP and defense you're going to give up to reach it and if that's worth it. But that's like a big process that's generally, honestly, not really worth getting into. Unless you really want to optimize for a single Pokemon, but that's highly personal. In general, I find just checking out the battle rating and seeing if the win record and average is close to the rank 1 more than enough to decide if your Pokemon is good enough for great or not. So to summarize, you're gonna start by picking the league you wanna play the Pokemon in. Put the meta you're gonna be playing against on the right. Start by adding the optimal spread on the left, which would be the Hundo and Master League. And in Great and Ultra League, I suggest doing the rank one. Then add your own spreads below that. Simulate in whatever shield scenario you want, but I highly suggest you do the ones to start with the original PV Poke IVs, but you could also consider doing the rank one. Press battle and check out how your IV spread differ from the rank, rank one in the battle rating, breakpoint, and attack 
tabs. From this point on, it's up to you to decide if your Pokemon is worth investing in. If you really want to min max, you could even compare the rank one to like the highest attack to see if there's any breakpoints you can shoot for. However, be warned, you might give up too much bulk in the process. Same counts for the bulk points, but you might give up too much HP or attack in the process. Be warned that metas can change and these are just simulations. No game is gonna play out exactly like the simulations. So keep that in mind and invest wisely. Anyway, that was it for today. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them all. No questions about specific IVs though. Don't ask me if your 14, 15, 15 Zerud is good enough. You can figure that out yourself now, I hope. Thank you very much. See you next video, everyone. Good luck with your battles.